officially off the ground. That's the first issue we're gonna be tackling. This front wheel. Let me uh this front wheel right here. It does not want to spin. But this side spins freely. I assume what I did here is these coilover setup. It was just like this coilover setup, it was thrown together. Um and I did a bunch of different combinations like hockey pucks, rear springs in the front and front springs in the rear, vice versa. So what I think I did here is I threw, cause these are rear coilovers in the front of this car. Um, dude, there's so much to explain, but these are rear coilovers in the front. I think I have the front springs on this coilover and the rear springs on that rear coilover. So I think this was like a test coilover. I did like hockey pucks and other combinations on this coilover and that resulted in me putting different springs on that coilover. So I'm gonna take this one out, see how long the spring is, go to my stash of coilover parts and see if there's a shorter spring because I think that's all it is. But yeah, hopefully that made sense. I don't know if it did. Uh, I'm just gonna swap out the spring and see if it does anything. Right I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't think that a new spring is gonna change this problem. Um, regardless, I'm gonna run spacers on this front just because it's so tucked in. So I think just throwing spacers on will fix this issue. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, I'm assuming they drop this diff. You just take off this bar right here, drop the exhaust. Um, obviously you take off axles and then there's two little points because the Miata diff is kind of weird. Um, it has like this upper support piece up here that always breaks. Um, some people always reinforce them. I don't know if I'll reinforce mine. I'll see how much the reinforcement kits cost and if it can come in time. I might. Yeah, you just take off those two bolts, take off your axle bolts, take off these and I think that's pretty much it. And then unbolt the exhaust and drop it so you can bolt out. There might be some more, but it's pretty simple. Thanks for coming out tonight. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. I Cut out a chunk of metal, weld it in. Yeah. Just metal else in there, but you have to put these guys in and make sure that the way that they sit in, the metal has to sit above that. So next day, I'm not really gonna film any of this on the big camera just because it's so wet outside. We're gonna be modding the knuckles today or taking off the knuckles to mod them. So I thought I'd get a little before and after. That's full lock right, passenger wheel, driver wheel. Actually not a bad amount of angle considering this is stock, but add a little bit more if we just shorten them. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm using tape for the amount that I'm chopping off of these knuckles and the Ackerman's going to stay just like stock. I don't know what everyone does but from a couple photos that I saw it looks like the Ackerman's about stock. 
but this is half inch wide tape so it will give me a parallel line to cut a uh, half inch off and just shorten your tire hard point and then I'll weld them up and we'll have chopped up. material that we're gonna have to fill in. I'll still tack it up. I'm just gonna kind of visually look at him, make sure that the Ackerman looks about the same. On Miata's, all I did was, this is, this ball joint flat surface is supposed to be the same like level with this. So that's what I did. I just let the knuckle sit on the steel here, but not go over to this little brake caliper mounting. So it was just flat, and then this sat flat right next to it. And that's how I made that sit. And now I'm just gonna visually look at them, make sure that they're both, they both look like they got the same Ackerman, right? So they look the same. And then I'll weld them up. Um, I really didn't film any of the assembly because of the rain. I don't want to like waterlog my camera, so I didn't really bring it out. But get you guys up to speed. Uh, then this will probably just transition to when the car's on the ground, and I'll bring everything is back on. Rear diff, engine mount spacers, the whole angle kits back on. Um, tie rod rack spacers are back on. Everything's back on. The only thing left to do before I can take this thing on the ground is I have one broken stub, stub, stud right here on the rear wheel. I'm gonna replace that really quick and then I'm gonna throw the spacers on the rear and throw the wheels back on and then lower the car finally. Yeah, that's kind of an up to speed. Our weather has been downpour for the last few days. I've been working in the rain. I'm like drenched, fully soaked. I already see some issues that, present, that already presented themselves. For one, there's no bueno with this front bumper. So you guys can see he's hitting it. Maybe when I do alignment, maybe this wheel is just forward right now because of the tie rod the rack spacers maybe this wheel will go a little bit more back and it'll cover this or clear this a little bit regardless i don't have a tab right there so i don't really mind if it bends it a little bit i know it's gonna do that on both sides this one's still in that's fine worst worst comes to worst and i lose that front bumper it's not a really big deal but uh running spacers up front angle is pretty damn fire i'll show more once i have my big camera out but let me hit full lock for you guys it's in the tie rod we have to also make a little like bump stop so it's the tie rod and not the actual tie rod itself so we don't bend it but good angle for a little one six i'm very stoked she's getting there i'll update you guys when everything's back together sorry for the iphone clips it's just so much easier and convenient to just bring out the phone and record a little bit it's finally done only took us three days <laughs> 